Among the Magnificent Seven stocks, Google is the only one on the intersection of being undervalued and underperforming this year. Indeed, if you look at Nvidia, it's up 90%. You look at Meta, it is up by over 40%. But Google is underperforming even the S&P 500. And according to an article written by Ray Dalio recently, Google is the tree best of the Magnificent Seven. Mr. Market is worried about Google just like it was worried about Meta in 2022. But I would have regretted it if I did not buy Meta in 2022. Mr. Market is right to be worried about Google. I have always used Google Docs to write my scripts for my videos, to make my analysis. But for the first time ever, I have switched to Notion. And coincidentally, the analysis is about Google. It is so much better. And I would rather use GPT-4 rather than Bard or even which has been renamed Gemini. But Google is Google. You are watching this video right now on YouTube, which is owned by Google. And for many people, Google is synonymous to the internet. That's why we have the verb to Google. And it doesn't matter where you are in the world. Even when I was in Russia, they have the verb Zagoglit, which means to Google, but they don't have one for Yandex. So Google is synonymous to the internet for many people around the world. If you don't know what Google is, I will suggest you Google it. Google story is a classic American capitalist story. There are four types of capitalism, and it's important to understand this to understand why Google is at the stage it is today. Type of capitalism in America is entrepreneurial capitalism. That is, the entrepreneurs are the ones pushing innovation. And that's why we have companies such as Apple that overtook IBM, which was the leader in computing. And other companies in the future are going to overtake Apple. In Europe, we have big firm capitalism. The big firms that were there 50 years ago, they are still controlling the economy. In Middle Eastern countries, Russia, we have oligarchy capitalism, while in China, we have state capitalism. So why this is so important is because this is a typical story. What is happening to Google happened to so many companies before. They became market leaders, but then smaller competitors started to try to take market share from them and gradually they lost that leadership. When Larry Page and Sergey Brin founded Google, they brought a solution to a big issue. That is indexing the internet. There was so much information now available, but there were no easy way to index everything. And Google was providing the solution. The search feature of Google was much better than anyone else. And then they went beyond search. If people can search on Google, why not control the web browser too? So we have Google Chrome. Why not provide the operating system, Android? Why not provide the hardware, Pixel? In all the ways that Google prospered, not Pixel, they, they did not really prosper. In all the ways that Google prospered, they helped to make the lives of billions of people better. And, and that's how Google grew to be the behemoth. Behemoth, be, behemoth, how do we pronounce this word? Let me ask Google. Behemoth making over 300 billion US dollars in revenues over the trailing 12 months. 10 years ago, their revenues were only 70 billion. So you look at the free cash flow today, they are around 70 billion. That's how fast Google has been growing over the past decade. I used to use Microsoft Office, but then switched to Google because they provide something easier to use. So that's the selling point, the main selling point of Google. They help people, they make the lives of people easier. And then with Google Cloud, even if it's not as popular as AWS, Amazon Web Services to corporations, but for the average person, it is easier. It integrates the whole Google ecosystem everywhere. And even if you're using an Apple iPhone, Google is the default search engine. They are paying Apple for that. And to keep using these services, you have to pay. I pay for Google Clouds. But the main way that Google makes money is through ads. That is Google services, which is 88% of the revenues of the company today. Definitely, Google is facing many challenges. Google Cloud only became profitable last year. And they are third place behind Amazon and Microsoft, which are already making a lot of money out of cloud. That's why it is so important for them to keep search. They cannot disrupt search. This is their main business. This is where most of their revenues, their profits come from. So it is hard for Google to come today and try to disrupt their best business. Google claimed for years to be the leader in AI with DeepMind, which they acquired in 2014. And I'm sure you have seen those videos of Google AI learning how to run. With all the data that Google possesses, we believe them. We believe that they were First, the leader in AI. But the issue was that they never had a product good enough to be launched. 
and the competitors came. Competitors that they were not even expecting. For example, OpenAI, which launched ChatGPT in 2022. And the whole world was asking, where is Google? Because they were supposed to be there. Microsoft then invested in OpenAI, but neither OpenAI itself or Microsoft had nothing to lose. Bing was not a successful business, so Microsoft making this investment was actually helping their product. But Google, to integrate AI research, something that no one so far has been able to do successfully, even with Bing, it is not that powerful, and on GPT-4, the data is not up to date. So integrating search with AI was risky for Google. That's why they were late to do it. They did not want to disrupt their best performing business, which represents today 88% of their revenues. Microsoft was adding to its business. What Meta did with the Metaverse was adding to their business. But Google, they had to disrupt their business, which is something different, and they did not want to take that risk. But the pressure was mounting on them, and they launched an unsuccessful product. There's certainly competition for Google search, but it doesn't come only from artificial intelligence. It also comes from human intelligence. I know many people, including me, who go on Reddit to look for information. I'm learning how to use Notion. I go on Reddit and look for the information. Of course, this information is available on YouTube, but it's harder to make a YouTube video rather than a Reddit post. So please smash the like button so that you send your data to Google, letting them know that you're entering this video. Younger people are also using TikTok to search today. And I have made the switch from Chrome to Aug because it is easier to use. But most people are not going to make this switch. For most people, Google is still the default. It is still the easiest. And that's because of inertia. Most people won't bother downloading another web browser. Most people won't bother learn how to use another one. And most people certainly won't be paying $20 a month for ChatGPT for GPT-4. Google may not be the best at specific tasks, but overall as a gateway to the internet, it is by far the best and the easiest to use. And because of inertia, most people are going to switch to different other products because you cannot use only one product like Google. You have to switch to several ones. Google is still the leader in search and there hasn't been any change after the launch of ChatGPT or GPT-4. These little issues that are happening have not really affected the search business of Google. But of course, if these issues are not addressed over the long term, they can cause a decline to the market share of Google. Because the growth of the company is already slowing down. Year over year, the revenues of Google only grew by 10% last year. Google is transitioning from being a growth company to a stalwart. And if we look at the definition of a stalwart, according to Google AI, a stalwart is a large company that have potential for long-term growth and have annual earnings growth rate of 10 to 12%. The company also have a strong balance sheet and solid cash flow. And if we look at Google today, this is a stalwart. It's good enough for me. Google has a net cash position of 81 billion US dollars. This is the definition of a strong balance sheet. But here we have to be careful. When looking at net cash, usually we take the cash of the company. From that, we remove the debt of the company. But in the case of Google, they have also capital leases, which amounts to 16 billion US dollars, which is a lot. And this is also a debt, a liability that they have to pay. So the net cash of the company is not 97 billion US dollars, but rather 81 billion US dollars. This is cash that the company can return to shareholders. They can buy back shares, which they are doing. It is not at such a fast rate. And in a few minutes, I will tell you why. But also, they can eventually pay dividends. I won't be surprised that Google takes the same step that Meta recently took to start paying a small dividend. As mentioned, Google has a solid cash flow generation. But once again, we need to be careful. We need to understand what is cash flow. We usually use free cash flow. That is the total cash that the company is generating after all expenses. But not all of this cash eventually goes to shareholders because Google has a big share base compensation, which amounted to 22 billion US dollars last year. So even though they are returning cash to shareholders through buybacks, they are increasing the number of shares through share base compensation. So overall, that's why the share decrease of Google has not been that much. And that's why owners' earnings makes much more sense than free cash flow. 
because it is really the cash that is going to the owners. And owner's earnings also have a difference in terms of capital expenditures. For free cash flow, we look at all the capital expenditures, but for owner's earning, which is the definition that Warren Buffett gave us in the 1980s, you can read his past letters, he gave us the definition. For owner's earnings, we all only use maintenance capex, how much the company needs to spend to maintain the current business. But looking at all the competition that is coming and the fast changing technology, even the growth capex, the capital expenditure that Google is investing for growth, we can count it as maintenance because they are maintaining their leadership. They are maintaining their position. So the share based compensation and the maintenance capex, which includes all the capex, brings the owner's earnings of Google lower. It is not as high as just looking at the free cash flow of the company. And since the intrinsic value of a company, by definition, is the total amount of cash that the company can return to shareholders over its lifetime, the owner's earnings are lower than expected, and even the cash position of the company is lower than you would initially thought because of the capital leases. So when I calculated the intrinsic value, which by the way, you can find on the Super Investors Club, there you can find all my analyses, all my courses, all my research, and there's even a special launch price. I'll put the link in the description. Once you discount all these cash flows of Google and you account for the net cash, according to me, Google is overvalued. You know when it would have been a good time, the best time to buy Google? That would have been in late 2022, when Bill Ackman bought shares of the company. Google was then trading at 15 times earnings, and Bill Ackman already made over 50% on that investment. I missed that trade, but you might say that I invested in Meta instead, which made me more money. There's another stock that I'm currently buying, which looks a lot like Meta in 2022, and I believe that Warren Buffett is also buying this stock. I would recommend you watch this video, have a nice day, and goodbye.